Welcome back. I wish you could smell the scents in this kitchen. To be a successful musician, you need to have a lot of heart and a lot of soul. And after getting to know and seeing jazz saxophonist Sisonke Conti perform, we know that he puts a lot of heart and soul into his music. But do those skills resonate in the kitchen? We're about to find out. <laughs> I love this not. because everyone, you know, in principle can cook, but when you've actually got to do it on live TV, it's a different Scary. story. Are you? I'm so are you, nervous. Are you comfortable in the kitchen generally? Are you a kitchen kind of guy? Not really. Um, but you know, I love winter because I love making stews, my, my own way, hearty food. Um, so let's see how this goes. I, I love it. You can crack on. I know there's a lot going yeah. on there. So as you put things in, you can tell us what's going into yeah, your so beautiful hearty I'm lamb stew. Already browning the onions here. Um, I'm going to add the browned uh, lamb knuckles. Mm. Um, yeah. And it's got to be lamb knuckles because you want the bone yeah. in there. The We've got, got a lot that. of flavor. Yeah, that's all the flavor. And then I'm going to add some stock. Okay. Um, and incidentally, I mean, I've learned this from all of our chefs because that's how I do it. Is I just steal the intellectual property from the last chef that I've yeah. interviewed and then I pass it off as if I know this, if this is me, um, you know, exhibiting my culinary Some knowledge. red wine. Nice. Because you've got to have I that. love, I yeah. love adding red wine. Um, but it's extra heartiness. Yeah. And you can have a little sip before you put it in. Oh, no. Yeah. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Some tomato paste. That'll also help and act as a, a thickener. I hope this will taste good, guys. Uh, well, your, your band demands it, man. They, they're going to be <laughs> Some working up an appetite. Oh, nice. Some mustard. mustard. That's a clever addition. I like that. Yeah. And then I'm going to add some garlic. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Some Worcestershire sauce. Hope Very I nice. said that right. And Perfect. then... And we don't judge in the studio, man. Please don't judge me, guys. Some <laughs> sugar. Did you spend a lot of time cooking? over lockdown because I think everyone kind of had to raise their game. Just yeah, there was, there was no more Uber Eats, I mean, so <laughs> I had no choice. That was some salt, guys. I'm gonna give it a little stir. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there was no option. I'm, I'm, I'm an Uber Eats kind of guy. Um, <laughs> but lockdown left us with no choice, you know? I, I found, I started baking, and I, I do a lot of it with my three-year-old, so that would yeah. be like spectacularly messy. The kitchen would be covered. At some time, yeah. Time leave, uh, yeah. uh, brilliant. Yeah, time and I'm land. I'm actually just going to throw it in. Things. Do it, just man. Just going to throw it in. Um, got some parboiled um, potatoes here. If you get a little stalk of thyme in there, it's okay. You just put it out. Cool. Okay, so we've parboiled our potatoes. Yeah. Okay, before popping them in. Maybe you have to do that because you know potatoes take a while to get soft, you know? Yeah, and um, I, one thing I've learned is when, when, why we brown the meat before. Some carrots, yeah. You, you want to caramelize those, those flavors. So you brown it first to kind of caramelize the fats that really releases the flavor in before you, you put it in and you're going to kind of let it slow cook. You seem to know more than me. Maybe but you yeah, should be doing I, this. I've learned from the best, man. I've learned from the best. <laughs> and then, yeah, I'll just leave this for about two hours to simmer in low heat. And just you know. really let all those flavors permeate. For sure. So uh, if you want Sisonke's um, trademark lamb, stew dish for your very self. Cool. Um, we're going to put this ingredients list. Do you need a little cloth there? There we go. Oh, cool. um, the, oh, you need a lid, hey? I need my so lid, you yeah. Would normally, you'd pop a lid on that, but yeah, we'll let it lid. just simmer away. Um, just leave it for now. We'll be, be waiting for, for two hours, so thankfully our kitchen fairy prepared us <laughs> a, a, a beautiful um, stew for a bit of a taste test here in studio. But, buddy, I'm very impressed. Well done. Thank you. Uh, I think you handled that with aplomb. <laughs> is, that, is that more nerve-wracking than standing up and, and leading a band? It's more nerve-wracking, especially <laughs> on live TV, you know, cooking. I wonder what my mom's going to say. But you've got so many um, strings to your, your bow, excuse the pun, yeah. and obviously playing the sax is one thing that I, it looks like you absolutely love, but you seem to really relish the collaborative element and performing in front and arranging and composing in that space. What is it about working with an ensemble like this that is so cool, so attractive to you? Um, you know, having a big band is, is, is nice because you, know, you can paint different colors. Um, and give each a person, I guess, a different role to, to kind of expand on that painting. That's what I like. And um, yeah, it just brings out the best in, in your music. That's what I like, you know? With jazz, it always feels like every performance is different. That you could perform the same song a yeah. hundred times and every single time yeah. it's going to sound slightly different. Yeah. How do you know what is right? Is it an intuitive thing? Does it come with experience? Do you, guys, do you give them the breathing room to just do their thing? I mean, we, we learn the song, obviously. Um, we play it as is. And then from there, you have freedom to express yourself. I guess people know, you know how the song should be. Um, and you always kind of have a home base. You know what I mean? If, we, if things 
sometimes things do get out of hand. Um, <laughs> but you know, you, you kind of know the song, so we kind of pull it back. People know, you know, what to do. Um, I guess that's that's the nice thing about jazz, just the freedom um, to express yourself. When you're performing your own music, are you a bit of a control freak? Um, do you do you let the guys have that space to to express themselves? I think I'm, I think I'm very soft. In fact, really? Yeah, I think I'm very soft. I'm, I'm looking across at the band to see if any of them are nodding, going, mm, oh, I don't know. <laughs> no, I think they'll agree that I'm I'm, I'm pretty soft. Um, I'm not a bully. I let people express themselves. So. Is it better when you get the collaborative input like that? Yes, yes, because I mean, you know, sometimes you can get so caught up in your thoughts, and you know. Uh, for especially me, sometimes I get, create, I, I get blocked creatively, you know, and, and they kind of help me, I guess, open up the creativeness in, in, in the sound of the music. Um, yeah, and suggest things which work sometimes, sometimes they don't, um, yeah. Um, so we know that this guy is going to cook for about two hours, Two hours, say? two hours. Okay, sure. so um, maybe we can turn the heat down a little. We don't want it to, to oh, yeah. overcook because everything in the studio go. gets eaten. I love it. Um, just very quickly before I let you go, then obviously being collaborative is great when you're writing an album slightly different to getting on stage and performing it. How difficult was it to get to a point to say, okay, my little baby's ready to, to release into the world? It was pretty difficult, but I had help um, from my good friend on the piano, Yonela. Um, he was, I guess, the... Uh, the guy I bounced my ideas to, um, and he, he helped me a lot uh, to just create this baby. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm pretty soft um, when, when it comes to this thing, but um, he helped bring out the music, yeah, and helped bring out the ideas that I had in my head. Um, and I think it must be amazing when, when the sum of the parts is, is so great, then it becomes something that's got new life into it. So what are you going to perform for us now to round off the show? Next, we're going to perform Sini Vile, um, yeah, and I'm going to be nice. singing. You're going to be singing. Well, I'm going to try to sing. I like the way that you looked into camera. You were like, it's declaring. <laughs> well, because people don't, don't know me as a singer. And I'm not, I'm not really a singer, but, you know, this song, I felt like I needed to sing it. It so. needed your voice. Why? Um, it's just the, the message I had, I had on it, you know. It's just a song about, uh, I guess I'm talking to our teachers, our mentors, um, who sometimes become like parents, you know. Um, and they find it hard to let go of us. And sometimes we want to try new things, we want to express ourselves differently, and they kind of hold us back. Um, now they've just got to let so you fly. So this is the message to them to just let us fly. Yeah. I'm going to let you fly now. You can go can to off. our music block Ooh. and uh, drop the apron, or you can keep it on if you I want to perform with the no, apron I on. Um, I think he did it absolutely brilliantly here in the kitchen with the artists like Sisonke Kontli. We know that the future of South African jazz is clearly in good hands. What a custodian. And there is no doubt that the unbelievably talented saxophonist is helping to shape the future of jazz for generations to come, but I think also the narrative of South Africa, so much put into every lyric, every bar in his music. We are so grateful to have experienced his talents firsthand here on the show. And we have got just one more performance to round off the weekend style. Uh, Sisonke is standing by with a performance of the song titled Cinevile. Take it away, brother.